Okay. What it do, guys, we're going to go and do a tier list from here onwards. We're going to set a couple of parameters straight. Okay. A couple of parameters straight. Number one, this is going to be subjective. You can agree and disagree with everything. It's totally fine. Just don't get too upset about it if I put your really S. All right. Uh, number two as well. Um, this is purely going to be based on these parameters here. So I'm going to quickly walk these down. Uh, S is going to be OP. Anything that's like overpowered or even arguably considerably broken. A is going to be meta or warframes that I play or I just really, really like. B is going to be that they're great or they have really good or they require a lot of setup, if you will. Uh, C is going to be that they're just good warframes. There's not really much else going to say. They're, they're kind of eh. They're just there, if you will. Eh, just there. And then D is going to be bad and reworks. More importantly, emphasized on the reworks, if you will. Um, so that's going to be the thresholds. That's what we're going to be doing as we're going into it. We're going to be ranking all of the warframes currently with Corvex in mind as well. So thank you to whoever did this tier list. Um, but um, we're going to be using this one here as well, all right? So we're going to start off with Ash straight out the gate, straight out the bat. Let's just go straight into it. Where is Ash going to go? I'm going to put him in B. Reason for that is I think Ash has got really good survival. Oh, something to go ahead and mention real quick is I'm going to try and base every Warframe based off what they bring and Helminth boot builds included. I was about to say boobs included. <laughs> Hell, we're doing it in one take, all right? We're doing it in one take because it's weird stutter there. Um, so helmet builds included as well. So when I look at Ash, first thing that comes to mind is obviously silence with um, his fourth ability. If I can't remember all of the names right now, forgive me, I'm just cooking. Um, that being said, with the melee crescendo coming out as well, I think overall when it comes to Ash, I do like him and I like what he brings. But my problem with him is that as you go ahead and channel his fourth ability and you look towards killing enemies and then you toggle it at that point, if I look at an enemy with most other frames, I can just kill the enemy right there and then. So he requires a bit of a setup with it, but he's got really good survival. It's stealth. Um, and he's just, he's really good at single target as well. Like it's, I can't rate him any lower. That's not going to happen, but I don't think I'm going to rate him higher. I would much rather use a different Warframe if I'm looking to kill or a different Warframe if I'm looking to survive. Ash goes in B, right? That's roughly where I'm looking right now. Up next is Atlas. Okay. Might rustle some jimmies, but we're going to go for it. B. Now this is only because of one build, which is literally his entire bread and butter it's landslides with the new incarnate weapons like magister incarnate ceramic dagger incarnate if you can get your hands on them oh my goodness atlas is in a much better spot right now i'm rustling some jimmies i'm rustling some jimmies chat all right but atlas is a much better spot right now um magus aggress as well um he can hit uh, even with the violet archon shards um he can hit around 100 mil in a punch which i find is Pretty, pretty crazy, right? You're near enough one shot in majority of things. You one shot acolytes. You don't need a hundred mil to one shot an acolyte, so he's one shot an acolytes. Um, so he's really, really good with the landslide builds. That being said, though, if if it wasn't for the landslide builds, I honestly would probably put him down here. So I'm going to be honest about it. All right, he would probably be down here. But the incardens have really helped him, and Magus Aggress really helped him. So he's got a really fun build right now. He's going to sit there for me. Um, he does require a bit of a setup to go ahead and get him going. It's more of like an investment, but yeah, give him a shot if you haven't. All right. Just a bit quick cough there. Up next we got Banshee. Banshee's going to go straight into A. It's hard to not throw Banshee in A. Pretty much. Her second and third ability are just too good. Her sonar and her silence. Her, su her silence is subsumable as well. So it also stops Acolytes and Eximus units using their abilities. That's also fantastic. So in terms of survivability, it's really, really good. Um, it really good in, it's also really good in Sedna Adaro if you're ranking weapons up. If you pair Gloom with it, it slows it down. So it's really good against Liches or Sisters of Parvos. It's just so hard to not rank her in there. Now, for what it's worth, she would, she would have been even stronger if um, her Quake didn't get changed. Back in the day where her Quake would just kind of do, deal the same amount of damage and it didn't work on the epicenter around, around her. <clears throat> really, really strong. But yeah, um, she's going to be straight in A. Enough waffling. Up next, we've got Baruch. Baruch is going to go into <laughs> B. Um, yeah, Baruch's going to go into B right now. Uh, reason for that, Baruch is really good offensively, really good defensively. However, however, kind of reminds me a little bit of the Ash here. His setup is very boring to play. 
Uh, I don't like having to be like, hey, everybody sleep or you know, elude things or whatever. And then finally I can attack enemies and then start doing these like hand symbols and whatnot as you can. Like, don't get me wrong. He does great damage. Don't get me wrong. And he's got really good survival. He can melt steel path like it's no issue. That doesn't really mean that I like him. My issue is, and something that you'll find during this, again, these lists are um, going to be very subjective. I don't really like a lot of the meta users, which means if you are a meta user, you might see what's going to happen with some other frames here. Um, melee just doesn't really cater to me. I'm not a big fan. Of, I'm not a big fan of melee. But anyways, Baruch is very strong, and I do like him. He's just not for me. This B tier list is kind of like not for me. It's kind of like they would be in the A tier, just not feeling it. All right. Caliban. Caliban is going to be in C. Um, <laughs> move up to S. Why? What? <clears throat> Caliban's in C. First things first, his first two abilities suck. There's not much else I can say there. His passive is adaptation, if you will, up to 50%, I think it is. Uh, and for allies, his uh, first ability, I don't even know what's going on with it these days. His second ability is Ragdoll State as well. Lifted enemies, not that great. But overall, um, his third ability has Sin improvements due to the shield gate change so it actually means that he can survive a bit better and his um plus you know having sentient allies is kind of nice anyways uh, and uh, his uh, his fourth ability is good for just armor strip sure it doesn't do a lot of damage but the utility of it is just really nice so i'm gonna pop caliban and C. there's not much else going to say there chroma <laughs> We had a bit of a practice with this tier list. I'm, I'm doing it in one take, but we had a bit of a practice. And uh, Chroma was the uh, <laughs> credit farmer. And I'm never not going to see him like that now. So he's been ruined. Where does Chroma go? He goes in D. It's just, oh, <laughs> I feel so bad for him. His fourth is not good. His first is not good. His third isn't good anymore. And his second is basically the best thing that he's got going for him. His passive is also awful. It's arguably one of the worst passives out there, along with like Frost, along with like uh, Oberon, along with like potentially Rhino if you really want to, Nova when she's knocked down. There's some pretty bad passives in the game. But anyways, Chroma is struggling right now. Chroma needs a rework. He just needs a rework. Yes, he's really good for his effigy placement when you're killing Profit Taker, but outside of that, you're kind of coping if you want to go and sit down and be like, oh, well, at least I can still path of him. Yeah, but you probably slapped every Umbral mod in your build. That doesn't mean much. Like, I, I do that shit as well. Everyone does that. Like, he's he's in a bit of a tough spot, okay? Citrine. Uh, she's 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 really meta oh she's really meta centrine's really good right now oh my goodness her fa okay her fractured lash is really really good her first ability uh, especially if you run an equilibrium builds it just caters for all of you not even just herself but her team benefits from it significantly her second is all right you know a bit of damage reduction can't really go wrong with it her third as of right now is in a very nutty spot as well um her fourth um will most than likely if the leaks are true uh most unlikely see an augment soon so her fourth might be even better um we'll have to go and see but right now as it stands her kit is very very good and she's a very good warframe so i'm pretty happy for her and her current state up next we've got the gaff the gaff is unfortunately a b uh she's a b right now um i'm not gonna do that on all of these frames so i'll stop doing that but anyways uh, the gaff is a b i would say she's strong and she's got good defense due to i think it's her third that also goes her defense isn't it i played a fair bit of her what i didn't like about her and i think this is something that a lot of people are going to agree on is the horses horses can be a little bit clunky um a little bit janky to go and use and at the time of release we're very loud uh, I think they've also softened softened how loud they are. That being said, though, I mean, she could still one-shot majority of things. Like, the horses are strong. Don't get me wrong. You know, you've got five horses charging at you. You are going to die in-game. Um, actually, no, no, in-game, in-game. Um, so, yeah, she, she's in a good spot right now. But there's not much I was going to say. I don't really use her that often. And uh, maybe with some interest in the augments down the line, she could be even better. But as of where it stands, we're going with that. Ember. Ember is, I think, C. So I couldn't make my mind up where I wanted this. Oh, no. I think B. It's either B or C. I'm not really too sure about Ember. Let me talk about her real quick. Because she is definitely one that I feel like is going to ruffle a few feathers um, with how it goes. But where it currently stands, she's not bad. She, she's not bad. Not in the slightest. I mean, she can armor strip and apply heat procs. Like, what? She's, she's great for that. But why don't I play her? 
And do you know what? I, I had this conversation with chat and I still can't answer it. I don't know why I don't play her. I, I can't put my finger on why I don't play her. Why? Because I, I want to do sick and impulse or I just, there's something about her that just doesn't really feel that great. So I don't know. I just feel like maybe what it, whatever it is that I want to get from her, I'm getting from other Warframes. Even when she offers it, it just still feels like it's eh. So I don't know. I was debating about putting her in B. Now, don't get me wrong. This is more for like a, uh, I was about to say word on fire builds. I mean, back in the day, she would have been a bit higher. Um, this is more to do with like an Inferno build and stuff like that. There is a bit of a new kind of build cycling around and so forth where you use her one as kind of like a, a buffer to weapon running, like running gunning. So that could probably put her in a B. I haven't used that build. Uh, so I'm going to keep it as true and as fair as I can. Everything that I say, I'm saying with experience. She get, she, she, for ma well, she for me for now goes into a C. If I do get around to that build and if it is good and whatnot, you might see a video on it, but who knows, all right? So she, that's where she says. Equinox. Um, I'm looking at my notes right now. Ah, yeah. So I ended up putting Equinox in the B. I won't lie to you. I struggle between B and C here. And you might be thinking, wow, she's not good. She's definitely better than good. And I'd agree with that. She's better than good. But I just don't use her. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. I use her for Sedna Adaro. And I use her for, if you know what Sedna Adaro is, it's ranking up your Warframes really quickly. I've got a guide on it on my channel. Um, and outside of that, I use her for animal conservation. Genuinely, I don't use her for any other reason. She can mend a main and it's good. She can rest and rage and it's all right. And her pacify and provoke is also all right, but I just, she's not my style of frame. That being said, I do know that she holds a bit more power. So I will bring her up into the B, even though I would personally say that I just don't really use her. But then again, I don't use Ash, for example, when I put him in B, so I can only but be fair. Anyways, Excalibur, C. Um, I used to main Excalibur, main, you know, like Smurf and whatnot. I used to play ranked with Excalibur uh, for two years when I first joined Warframe. I loved Excalibur. I lived, breathed and slept. I did every Marshy rank test of him. I did every quest with him. I was Excalibur pro and Excalibur main. I then did something called the A to Z series. And I know I'm yapping right now. I did an A to Z series, basically challenge yourself. Every day you have to play a new frame and you've got to go through all of them. You're not allowed to get off that frame for any reason. That's what I did. And what I found out is Damn, I really don't like Excalibur. <laughs> um, so many other frames offered way more to the style that I was looking for. So I ended up just dropping him. Um, I don't think he's bad because he's definitely not. Would he be in the rework or anything like that? Else like that? No, there's other frames that screen reworks more than what Excalibur does. Um, so he's going to sit there right now. But he's all right. But again, he's a melee user as well. I, I, I don't do melees, all right? Don't hate me for that. Well, you can hate me. I don't care. Anyways, Frost, A. Uh, if it's the very paradox, S. Frost is, Frost is uh, A right now. Frost has to go into A. He's just too good. He gives you over... With the changes that came through recently, I did a video on him again, if you haven't checked that out. With the changes that came through recently, um, the new Arcanes, the, the rework to focus schools, the, the additive version of kind of like armor stripping and requiring less to armor strip now nowadays. Frost is in such a great position, not even including the Overguard, right? He's in such a great great position it's so nice going to see it yes his passive absolutely honks his passive honks i'm not going to lie about that his first is more used for like utility for his thirds and kind of popping it and his seconds i don't even know what it does um <laughs> but his third and fourth however more more importantly his fourth is the reason to put him in a he's just in a very very good spot right now but it does require an augment and uh that's basically about it. Right, up next is Gara. Uh, she's going to go into the B. Gara's really good defensively. Um, she's really... If you're looking for a nice support inside a team, you can go ahead and run a Gara. Um, that being said, though, in terms of quality of life, there are just better supports um, because you're going to have to, like... Anybody out there who's played Gara more than a day will understand this feeling. Nothing worse than you trying to refresh your teammate and then lose in line of sight on your teammate as you're trying to press two. Like, no, come here. No, stop going. Dude, come here. Oh my, that. Uh, no, save yourself. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, you can refresh it if you re-entered your mass vitrify, but brother, you're leaving the tile set, right? And I can't refresh it. So don't look at me and be like, Gara, why didn't you... Oh my god, Chessel. Outside of that, though, she's got a good uh, offensive build with stat sticks with the uh, Mass Vitrify and Shattered Lash. That being said, though, it's very noisy and I don't like it. All right. But yeah, she's strong. Sits in B and I would say B comfortably. 
Um, I think they should change their seconds. There needs to be a better quality of life of giving it to your teammates. <clears throat> uh, here's this, Garuda. Uh, Garuda's A. Um, there's too many good builds with Garuda right now. Uh, to name a couple, uh, Garuda with Gloom, so Bloodletting Gloom, and you go ahead and run and gun with the Bloodforge. I think, I think I got it right. The Augment for her Bloodletting. Um, so you get like an instant reload, Bibonico and so forth. Really, really good builds. Sorry that I keep plugging things right now, but I have the build on my YouTube if you want to go check it out. Um, as for the other things, she's got a Thermal Sunder build as well that she can go and do. And she's also got a um, Radial build that she goes into the air. She uses her Seeking Talons, which is her fourth ability, and she subsumes in Nourish as well. So just... She's just too good. All right. She's a very, very good frame right now. So she goes in A. All right. Up next is Gals. And funny enough, he follows he follows suit here because funny enough, I just said Thermal Sander and here he is. All right. Gals is just too good. His entire kit is just really, really nice. I like his passive. I like his first, although it's a bit situational when you use it, if you will. Um, his second is good. Um, can't really complain about it anyways. It would have been nice if there's a bit more immunity there, but I'm kind of pushing, uh, I'm pushing for too much. His third Thermal Sunder is absolutely gross and it's subsumable. More importantly, to get the most out of his Thermal Sunder, uh, you need his red line, his fourth. And Gauss Prime comes out January this month, 2024. So, plug, I have a video on Gauss. <laughs> you love it, you love it. Anyways, uh, up next we've got Grendel. Uh, I put Grendel in B. Grendel is good. <laughs> Grendel's good. Uh, if anything, well, I mean, sorry, he's he's better than good. He's great. Uh, his face is, is is very very good. His nourish ability, as you'll start to notice, is like literally on every goddamn Warframe and their grandmas lately. And then he's also got the, uh, and then he's also got his regurgitate, which is also very very good. Yeah, and I have a lot of Grendels, a lot of them. I have too many Grendels, but we don't talk about that. We'll move on. All right, but he's in a very good spot right now, so I can't really put him just as good because. He's not in the same tier as these three. Um, up next is Jaya. Jaya for me is A, meta. Here's the thing. Jaya got a new augment called Cathode Current. I think it is for her Cathode Grace or it's the other way around. Forgive me. One of them's the augment, one of them's the ability, which is her third ability, right? And uh, she's a very momentum-based frame. So if you like running and gunning and killing with lots of enemies coming towards you, She's your gal. She is going to absolutely handle it with complete ease. Lots of shocking, a little bit of minor crowd control with the electric procs, and then just annihilating with your weaponry. So she's very, very good. That being said, though, if you have to do side objectives and you need to go and jump and collect something, or you need to go ahead and leave this room away from all the enemies and go collect something else, you kind of punish your builds um, due to the fact that, again, it's very momentous. Once she gets going, she wants to keep going. And if she expires on her third ability, she can get a very long cooldown if you don't set her up. So that being said, though, she's still very, very fun to go and play. Do go check her out. Harrow is A as well. He is not flashy in the slightest. You, if you're looking for a killer frame and you're like, oh, God, um, I want someone to go ahead and play right now. Um, and I just want to kill loads and loads of people. No, he's not your guy. However, if you're looking for one of the best supports to have in a team, one of the best, um, Harrow is up there. There's just too many good things that he gives the team. He gives energy. He gives fire rate. Um, does he give you shield return? I can't remember. He gives himself shield return on Condemn, right? Um, I think he actually has an augment that can do something like that. Oh, no, maybe I'm wrong. Anyways, um, and then he's got his uh, Covenant, his uh, fourth, and that gives you additive critical, plus also invulnerability for a brief period as well. So there's just too many good things that he gives you that there's almost no reason to not have him inside a squad. He feels like, uh, do you know what? I've only just kind of put a finger on this. He kind of feels like a bit more of a modern day and a bit of a better Trinity. I've only just put my finger on that, but I'll kind of get to that a little bit later. That's only just kind of hit me, but I don't know why. Anyways, moving on next, we got Hildren. I didn't really know where to go and put Hildren, and Fortuna was an amazing update to me. Uh, a lot of a lot of wonderful things happen for our channel and our channel growth in Fortuna. Um, but that being said, it I, it pains me to kind of do this, but I'm just going to be dead honest with it. I want to put her here, not in like a particular order, like Caliban's better than her or anything. I'm just going to put her in C. I think she's good. And yes, there is like a full armor strip with, with blazing and so forth. And I get that. And maybe I could go and put that there. <sighs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tight, I'm not, I don't think I care if it's either C or B 
So if it bothers you, fair enough. I don't think I care if it's C or B. All right. If you skip to the very end of this video and you go, oh my God, she's in C, I can't believe it, then you didn't listen to what I'm saying right now. Okay. Please don't skip all the way to the end. Um, she's in between B and C. I, I just don't really know where it's going to put her. I, her bail fire is all right, her first ability, but in most cases, you subsume it off. Her Aegis was at the time where the game Anthem was coming out. Yeah, there's a throwback for all of you. And I think we thought her Aegis Storm was going to work a bit more jetpack heavy and she was going to have a lot more fluidity with it and a lot more movement. And I wouldn't be surprised if you felt like that because I felt like that. And that wasn't the case. So she, yeah, she, she didn't really work like that. So Aegis Storm is okay. Her second and her third are obviously just her bread and butter at that point. Haven can be a little bit annoying, her third ability. Sometimes it's giving shields when I don't really want to give shields. So it's like, well, then why use it? And it's like, ah, sometimes I wish there was like a, I could toggle it to particular enemies or I could toggle it for defensive or offensive capabilities or you see what I'm saying? Sometimes it'd be nice if there was a way that I could micromanage it a bit more without it being too much of a hassle though. So, but anyways, I don't really know where to go and put her. I'm not fussed to be dead honest with you. It's going to be B or C. Moving on. He's yapping. He's yapping. Up next, we've got Hydroid. Hydroid is going to be in B as well. Um, ideally, Hydroid should be in A. Um, just the setup on Hydroid that I find a little bit bland. Hydroid's passive is gross, and I get that. Arguably one of the best passives in the game. His viral tempest ability is really really good as well just a bit too spammy for my liking and i don't really like that i like running and gunning a bit more so again you're going off those kind of parameters with me um but yeah could he fall into meta absolutely all right so don't any of these like could i jump this one to here no could i jump this one to here no but could i jump this one to here and here yes so if you see it that way then hopefully you get more of an idea but um yeah i'm gonna put him inside the b right now did i have anything else gonna say about him yeah, I, I, yeah, I just, I literally just said he's, he's arguable. He's, he's an arguable for A. That's my notes on him right now. But anyways, um, yeah, just a really good rework. Really good rework. Uh, up next, we've got Ineros. And according to Overframe GG, <laughs> he's a B. <laughs> what? Uh, no, he's not. Uh, he's a, he's a D. Can we, let's just not cope for a second. Um, it is completely, completely viable, understandable, I get it if you're a person who's a Hydro. I don't know why you're a Hydro main. Uh, hydroid main? Sorry, if you're an Interus main. Sorry, Hydro was so bad for so long that I was like, oh, Hydro. Uh, if you're an Interus main, I, I get it. I get it. But also, don't stop wasting your time. All right. He, he needs some love. Okay. At the end of the day, I want to see the best. I don't want these frames to be down here because I hate them. I want to see these frames down here because I want these frames to go ahead and be better. Hyd uh Hydroids. Oh my god, I keep saying Hydroids. Sorry, Hydroids. You catch strays for so long. I'm sorry. I'm glad that you're better now. Thank God. Um, Inter Interos needs to be better. <laughs> Interos, chat, you're making me laugh. Uh, Interos needs to be better right now. So I'm hoping that we can see some uh, improvements with him. Uh, his first ability, second ability, the invulnerability side of things as well is also a bit jank. Um, Sandstorm, there's a very weird niche build that you can go and do, but it's not right, really worth it. And honestly, his fourth could easily be far better. And you know that he can channeling it and doing this. <laughs> it's a complete waste of my time. So uh, not very ninja-esque, if you will. Speaking of ninja-esque, we got one that I definitely know will ruffle feathers. Ivara and C. And no, I'm not putting her higher. And I know that's going to bother some people. I want to kind of explain my reasoning for this, though. Having a little look at her kit, she's very counterintuitive to the whole ninja's playstyle as well. Again, what I was talking with the whole channeling thing where you're standing still. Um, her prowl back in the day, for anybody who could be a uh, Ivara main now, her prowl back in the day, I sound ancient when I say this, um, she used to be able to bullet jump whilst remaining cloaked. Ever since they removed that, it just felt like a hindrance on her. And I haven't really played her since. Now, don't get me wrong. She's got a good augment with her dash wire, and that's good. Her first, her quiver is subsumable, and you can use that in some very niche scenarios going to survive. That's also good. And I get that. Like, don't get me wrong. Her second navigator is also very good for damage. I'm I'm not gonna disagree with that. It's very bland using it though, and it's fun once or twice, but you have to be a bit of a lunatic to really enjoy that all of the time. 
I'm just going to be honest. Prowl's a little too slow for me. And then Artemis bow is all right, but I'd just rather go ahead and use like Natarak or a better bow or I don't know, Brahma or something else like that. You get the idea? So when I kind of look at her, I think she's good and I don't think she's great. And I can't justify putting her up here when I just don't use her. So if you do use her, fair enough. All right, this is just my list and I can't justify her. Anyways, she does do, she does do good damage. I will admit that, but it's a bit boring to do that damage. Cora. Honestly, yeah, A. <laughs> All right, I'll stop doing it. Anyways, Kara's going to go into the A. Um, yeah, Kara, uh, there's too many good things about Kara, isn't there? There's too many good things. I, I don't know what else I going to say here. Like, look up any goddamn build of her. Again, Pilferin Strangle Dome was one of the best things added to the game. Um, she's really good for zone control. She's really good for farming. Uh, uh, I was about to say Shattered Lash, you know. Uh, what, what's the name of her? Whipclaw. I can't remember the name of her first ability. Whipclaw with stat stakes. Again, these Incardens have just changed the game as well. Ma uh, Magus uh, Aggress with the new Arcane has also changed it. Core is just looking so good right now. So good. You're also going to notice there's a lot of like, there's no no one in the OP so far, but don't worry. There will be. <laughs> um, but yeah, Core is in a very good spot right now. Just TLDR, all right? Um, very good frame. Very good frame. Especially when you look at the zone or uh, material farming. Up next, we've got Calervo A. And not even a, a... Calervo is one that I could argue for S. I'm not going to, but I could. Recently, with the Violet Shards that have come out, I could probably argue for S. Because, oh my god, uh, majority of weapons that I'm using with him are hitting not so much on average, but peak numbers. Peak numbers on average, one bill. Majority. It's kind of crazy that I'm saying that out loud, but yes, 1 billion damage. And I'm not joking. Uh, I'm more than happy to go ahead and do a build on him if you guys do want to go and see that build. Um, even with the Cyber Incarnate. And, and even if it's in the Incarnate, it doesn't matter. It's still the Cyber. No Riven, just normal mods. Off you go. It just, oh my God, he's so insane. Recompense, Overguard is in a much better spot. Uh, and then his third and fourth is just like a really funny kind of gimmick thing to go ahead and do in, in choke points. And you just absolutely blitz everything down. Lovely jubbly, right? Right, moving on. Lavos. Listen, Kenji is going to hate me for this, but it doesn't matter. Hate me. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry, Ken, okay? Um, sorry, not sorry. Um, Lavos is literally the pilot for Railjack. I, I can't deal with Lavos with his cooldowns. I like the idea of the gimmick. Maybe the cooldowns are just a little too high for me. And uh, I'm just not, I'm not feeding them. I'm not feeding them. Everyone's got their styles and some people are going to like them. He's not my style. Uh, I think he's good. I don't think he needs a rework because I, because I think that he's good. I don't think he's bad. I just don't think he's my style. Um, so yeah, but otherwise for Railjack right now, he's great. So I love that for that. Okay, so Limbo is, I had this conversation briefly. I don't really know how to go and do this. Limbo is either um, a Warframe that is either going to be <laughs> fine in his current state or I need to heavily rework him. Here's my two cents. I'm going to put him into reworks. At the end of the day, I don't think you can balance two dimensions. I just don't think you can. I think, I think Limbo will always fall victim to... Hey, do you know what cheese works right now? Limbo. Oh, no, wait, hang on. We need to laugh him for that because that's he's not supposed to do that. Oh, do you know what? Do you know what cheese works right now? Limbo. You see, I just I think he needs a rework. I don't think having two dimensional planes, at least in its current state. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even saying that you have to completely strip apart the idea of two dimensional planes. But with what he's doing, yes. And with how it works, yes. I don't know if there's a way to even balance it. It's just always cheese. It's never not cheese. So I don't know what's going to do there. All right. I don't know what's going to do. Loki, rework. Loki also falls victim into the whole rework thing. He's just outdated. That's all. I don't I don't think he's, he's it's, it's, there's nothing horrible against him. Whereas Limbo is like, it's not so much that he's outdated. It's just like how his concept is. Loki is, no, he's outdated. His first is just a decoy. I think he gets a new augment soon, which will be kind of interesting. Again, if the leaks are true, um, he'll get a new augment soon. So that could be interesting. We'll have to see what happens there. Um, his second is without that is bread and butter and it's really good. His passive is um, his passive. What more do you want me to say there? His passive is his passive. Next. 
Um, his third ability could genuinely be condensed down into his first ability, and his first and his third could literally be somehow synergistic with one another, where you could do it all in one ability rather than two. And his fourth, Radial Disarm. For the most part, you could probably use it in a material farm sense, but it's so niche when to go and use it. We've grew out of the meta of being crowd control heavy if you will so i'm gonna put him in d and i think he needs a rework personally it would have been cool to see him just alike and almost in a way that mirage has our clones trickery deception stuff like that because loki you know it would have been cool to see him go down that route i don't know if we can go down that route still because again mirage with the clones kind of exists and yeah i don't know i don't know but let me know your thoughts let me know your thoughts but i, I would say he needs a rework his, his two is basically the biggest thing that he's got going for him as of right now that's just my two cents uh mag so mag's arguable between b and a here but i'm gonna go and put her in b uh, i'm gonna be honest and I, again this is how you know that everything that i'm saying here i either ha a have experience in it or b i'm just being straight up brutally honest um she could be an a uh, i'm sorry i haven't looked into any recent builds of her <laughs> so, so, so she's she's literally on my to-do list to go ahead and actually look into some really good steel path builds of her i haven't done it here's the thing I've never once seen her as a good frame. She's always been great. Even back in the day, she was always, in my opinion, great. Um, if anything, she's a lot better nowadays, so she probably should be an A, but because I haven't gotten around to it, I'm going to put her in B. Um, if you're looking for a Warframe that can, uh, you know, I don't know. Do, I don't know people mostly, do you guys use crush builds or anything? I'm just going to kind of talk to my chat real quick. Do you guys actually still keep her fourth or do you guys just subsume it off these days? I don't know, but she can go ahead and armor strip. She's got shield, re shield gate in returns. Um, so she's looking pretty promising. Paul's in a better spot as well. Oh, okay, you guys. Okay, so they're saying cr crush with crush with the augment is what people are going on. So yeah, I should really look into her. And with the, uh, with the Archon shards, Amber Archon shards as well, to speed things up with the natural talent sounds like she's a much better spot so uh but for me for now for the video sorry guys she's to be uh mace is a i don't think i even need to elaborate anything on maces um but if anybody's new to warframe and you want to understand more about a particular warframe why why is this warframe here uh mesa is pew 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 dpi on your mouse sixteen thousand, and just literally <laughs> And everything dies. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Okay, if you like guns and you like wiggling your mouse on very high sensitivity, you'll like Mesa. Okay, she is what every uh, hacker out there dreams of, and she is the problem for every developer out there. She is literally a spindle in. Um, no, she's fantastic though. So she's in a, and she's in an even much better spot right now with the new shards that have just come through. Uh, up next, we got Mirage. Now, here's the thing. There's two ways I can base Mirage. Just two different ways. And I don't really know how to base this. But since I'm going off like their main builds and what I really like, um, I'm going to go ahead and go with Ledger Domain A tier. Okay? Ledger Domain is just too good. Can't be killed if the enemy's dead. And the enemy can't do anything if the enemy is dead because of how quick you're doing everything. So you're just setting up constant traps. With all of the Archon mods coming through recently as well, she's in a very, very good spot. Um, yeah, it's it's too hard to not put her up there. Here's the thing. Outside of that, though, outside of Ledger Domain, um, I struggle to survive with her. Um, her Eclipse needs a toggle, which I think is something they're looking into this year. We'll have to go and see. Uh, Rebecca did go and say something ever so briefly about it, but um, really good offensively. Just in my opinion, her defense needs a little bit more oomph for me. Um, but in terms of offense, I'll put her out there as A, okay? And I do use her, so. Necros. Now, Necros is the one Warframe I have forever vouched for where I would say I genuinely and humbly believe that every war every Warframe player in the game needs to have a Necros. Needs. And the reason why I say that is because Warframe has got so many materials and so much farming that you need to go ahead and do. There's almost no downside to just having him in your arsenal for some farming. If I create a new account right now as well, yes, I would even have a Necros. I feel like top five must have Warframes. Necros is in there. He's just there. His, his Desecrate ability is just too good. You turn on his third ability, the enemy dies, you consume it, you go ahead and get a chance of extra loot. It's 54% chance, flip a coin, heads or tails, heads, boom, double loot. Tails, no, not as much. Okay, it is what it is. But that's basically how Necros works in a, in a, in a nutshell, if you will. 
uh, up next, um, oh, he's got good survival as well. And I think he's in a much better spot nowadays. And his Terrify is insane now, right? Absolutely insane. Um, absolutely insane. Someone's saying, is it better than Korra? Him better than Korra? Do you know what's better than him and Korra? Uh, him over Korra? Having him and Korra. He stacks with Korra. That's why he's insane. And yes, I would still rather have him because then if I'm running around, I can run and gun with him. I can't run and gun with Korra. I always have the pilfering before I go and do anything. He can go wherever and wherever. He doesn't have restrictions. As long as he's got health or energy, depending whether or not you have the augment, he's good. Anyways, uh, moving on next, we've got Nijar. Nijar is a C. Nijar doesn't really bring anything to the table for me. I like Blazing Chakram. Um, Warden Halo's all right. And the first for the immunity is good. I think he's a good frame, but I just don't see the reason for me to use him. Me personally. Okay? Me personally. Um, there's not much else for me to go and say there. If you do like a, a bit of a quicker running tank, if you will, that can also debuff enemies, he's your guy. If you don't like that, then he's not your guy. And that's the reason why I don't. So uh, up next, we got uh, Nidus. That is Nidus. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Default skins. Default skins. Up next, we got Nidus. Nidus goes into A. Um, so I was going to go ahead and put Nidus into B, but I just... I'll be honest. I don't... Uh, okay, here's the thing. I don't use Nidus, and Nidus doesn't work that well inside team environments unless the team understands not to interrupt him. Okay? That being said, though... Minus those parameters, if you're looking for someone to go ahead and hold a, an area and basically live invincibly, and just and for it, uh, that's not even a word, but just live forever. Really great passive, really good damage reduction, really good sustainability, decent damage output, good good group up, so forth. You get, he's just kind of got it all. That being said, though, I don't personally use him. <sighs> Actually, to be honest, I'm going to put him in B. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, Nidus. It's it's due to that restriction. Actually, no, no, sorry. I don't know why I did this. No, no, never mind. If I'm... I've got to stay true to the tier list. And if the tier list was for what the build does when you, the build wants it, if you want a solo survivalist, he's very he's very good, right? He's very, he's very good. So no, he goes back into A. But solo survivalist, he goes into A. He's, he's one of... The, if I said to you right now, name a solo survivalist, let's be honest, be honest, some of you guys are going to probably end up saying Nidus. So therefore, he's going to go into A because he is one of the top off the top of the heads to go ahead and recommend. Uh, Nova goes into A. Um, her Molecular Prime, which is her fourth ability, is just too good in Warframe. You can either go ahead and speed up enemies so they can get to you quicker or you can slow down enemies so they don't get to you quicker. Either way, doesn't matter. She manipulates and controls the battlefield and she's too good for it. There's too many missions where we need her for that as well. So she goes into A. Outside of that, Speedrunners, Wormhole. If you can nail the length and the tile set angle and, you know, the trajectory and whatever. If you can nail that, amazing for speedrunning. If you can't, she's going to go and zoom you into a wall. And you're going to be like, oh, God, I've hit another wall. Um, outside of that, though, her first is all right. It can give you a bit of um, protection, uh, although you want low range of it. And then her second is is also all right. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a big fan of her second, but that's just my two cents. Up next, we got Nyx. Um, Nyx goes into B. Yeah, Nyx is good. If anything, I could go and put Nyx into A, but if I feel like solo survivalist, I'd pick probably Nidus maybe over Nyx, potentially. Here's the thing. People sleep on Nyx, and I'm going to be dead honest. She's not flashy. She's not flashy. She kind of reminds me a little bit of Harada. She's not going to be flashy. Don't expect to go in lots of guns blazing and so forth. What you're going to do is you're going to control the battlefields, right? So they're going to, they're going to hit absolutely everybody all around them and so forth and whatever. And then from there onwards, you can remove shields or armor, basically look at that. I think you need 25% strength, if that. It's one of the best debuffing abilities in the game. Um, it's not subsumable. Wait, is it? No, it's not. Wait, what'd you get from Nyx? Oh, mind control. Um, her mind control's not great. Um, <clears throat> but her, her second and her third are really, really good. Her fourth is debatable. More so, you need the augment. Her fourth... Her fault can also be used to cheese in some situations where you can go and just absorb all the damage and then release it and nuke and so forth. And you can use that with teammates, uh, team members, squad members. Um, but either way, long story short, 
she deserves to be in B and I don't, I can't put her in C and I'm definitely not putting her in A because I don't think she's meta. Obrone, <coughs> D. He's outdated. It, 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 his passive is literally, he, he gives companions 25% extra health and armor and whatnot. It's just, what? He's, he's not in a good spot right now. Obro needs some fucking dire help for him. <laughs> There's nothing else going to say that. He needs some dire help for him. He's outdated. The best thing that he's got going for him is his hallowed ground to go and prevent status immunity. And nowadays, you know, we have mods like Rolling Guard that can just remove it. So it's tough. It's tough. Um, Phoenix Renewal is also the best thing that he's got going for him, which is an Ogman. And uh, I think his third is outdated. I think his fourth is outdated. Uh, his first is... Oh... K with Augman. But yeah, anyways. Octavia. Octavia goes into B, and for what it's worth, she should go into A. Um, she requires a lot of setup though, and she is a Warframe that not only has really good damage, not only has really good survival, but the reason why I put her in B is because she plays herself. It's gonna sound really awkward. I wanna play. But I don't like it when the Warframe's just doing everything for me. It's kind of the reason why I don't like, although yes, she's an A, but there are missions where I will run her. There's not as many missions where I'll go and run Octavia because I want to play. And at least I can play and move around with Mesa. You know, her, it's basically countdown simulator. I'm not a big fan of that. So long as you are rotating through your buttons. If you're looking for like a semi AFK build though, she's your gal, all right? She is very, very good. It's just she plays herself, and I find that a little bit tedious. So, really good for zone survival, stuff like that. Uh, up next, we've got Protea. Uh, Protea's A, no doubt. Uh, Protea's too, too good right now. Honestly, she's got she's got some absolutely insane damage with her turrets. Even though Grenade Fan's all right as well. Her survival is really good with Grenade Fan, plus Temporal. Temporal's new Augment makes her second even better and dispensary do i need to say much dispensary alone is one of the best abilities you can go and subsume along with like nourish for example <clears throat> excuse me so uh yeah protea is up there just really really good corvex corvex is gonna go into the sea now here's the thing <clears throat> corvex isn't yeah corvex isn't bad he's, he's just kind of there right now um i like his kit i like his kit i would like to see some more number tweaking with him uh, ideally, maybe some more damage on Crucible Blast, uh, which is his fourth ability. Uh, Chirinka Pillars, pretty cool. I do like the gimmick between Crucible and... He's got a gimmick where his fourth enhances his first. It kind of reminds me of Gauss, where his fourth enhances his third. See what I'm saying? He needs re he needs red line to get the most out of Thermal Sunder, whereas Corvex needs uh, Crucible Blast to go ahead and get the most out of his Chirinka Pillar. So... Pretty cool. I haven't subsumed his ability that much on other Warframes yet, so I don't really know how good that is. But for the most part, he's just there. I don't think he's bad. I don't necessarily think he's great. Love to see some augments on him. Love to go and see what we can do with him down the line. Wouldn't mind a bit of a number tweak. And his containment breach or containment wall. No, containment wall. Yeah, holy crap. For the love of God, buff that. It does 25% damage vulnerability. And in terms of grouping, this is nowhere near as good as AoE grouping from like... Uh, the airburst from Sephir, um, from the ensnare from Korra, from the lava from Night, like all of those are just nice, good AoEs. Pull from Mag it is even probably arguably better at this point. So, uh, and the damage vulnerability is twenty five percent. Sephir costs fifty. Ureli's two hundred percent. It's just it's so low. It's so so low. Up next, we got Revenant. I told you there'd be an S. There would be an S. Mesmer skin. It's Mesmer skin. I don't really know what else you want me to go and say. Mesmer skin is literally old Wukong. If you didn't play Wukong back in the day, if you didn't play him back in the day, you literally pressed his, at the time, I think it was his second ability, which was Defy. Now Defy is his third ability. Back in the day, you go and press the second ability to Defy and you basically wouldn't die. Right. Revenant is kind of basically just Wukong. Okay, so it's not really durational, if you will, and it's based upon charges. But since we're so power crept right now, right? Since we're so power crept, Mesmer skin is Revenant. 
Like that's, guys, I'm not putting Revenant up there because I'm like, oh my God, his first, third and fourth are just really like, I'm putting Revenant up there because Mesmer skin, I think is actually overpowered. Genuinely overpowered. So another promo that we want to go and talk about, because I know at this point, this someone might be skipping through the video or wanting to hear my reasoning about some stuff. For what it's worth, I'm going to say something and hopefully let me cook, right? If we're basing about what is overpowered, we ourselves as Warframes are so incredibly power crept, I could put everybody up there. Is that fair to say? In terms of all of the new mods, arcanes, rework focus schools, archon shards, we are so unbelievably strong. We've never been so strong. Level 9999s do nothing. Like absolutely nothing. Right? There's there's not much further we can look to push at this point. Build crafting is at its absolute pinnacle right now. If you are build crafter, you are thriving. You are frothing at a froming at a mouth right now. It is so good. So if we're basing it upon all of that, then yes, I can put more warframes up there. Like Saren should be S, Mesa should be S, fair enough. But I don't see them as overpowered, more so in the sense that I see that we are overpowered. That's all, okay? It's my list. It's my list. Mesma skin might actually be broken genuinely besides from getting nullified or falling off the edge of the map and resetting you press two you ain't dying chief you ain't dying put that thing and the fact that he's got an augment that can give that to allies <laughs> what the fuck what is i don't know i don't know i don't know all right i think that's overpowered personally up next we got rhino Okay, I'm just moving on. Don't get me wrong. The rest of his kit is also fine. Uh, being able to control enemies, re-through them, or uh, re-through um, enemy a, a certain amount of time. I don't really like doing it, by the way. Reeve is kind of a headache of the ability to use. But when you go ahead and go through the abilities and so forth, um, if you go through the same target multiple times with Reeve, you can go ahead and just nuke them down as well. It can, like, one-shot Acolytes really quickly. Well, I say one-shot, but Meltdown Acolytes. And his dad's Macabre isn't too bad because it does adaptive damage. But anyways, Rhino. Rhino's going to go into C. Now, if I was basing this purely upon abilities, yes, Raw would not put him in C, and I get that. Outside of that, let me go ahead and, let me go ahead and cook, right? His passive, not good. He lands on the ground. Oh, great. The ground shakes a little bit. Hey, I do that. Okay, so, you know, it is what it is. I only rate myself as C, okay? I'm reworking, I'm reworking. Right, from there onwards, we got his first, which is kind of like a charge. Now, as I say it's kind of, it is a charge. Um, Yeah, you would mostly use that in terms of, like, synergy with the augment for a second, if you will, to try and build it up a bit more. You can go ahead and do that as well. Uh, otherwise, his second, Iron Skin, out of all of the four methods of getting Overguard right now, I would go ahead and argue that his Overguard's Iron Skin isn't good enough for Steel Path. I feel like he needs a bit more of a base buff for it. That's what I believe, okay? Just my two cents. His Raw is very good. <clears throat> sure, he gets the Ministry of Returns when you subsume it, but arguably, his Raw is the best part of his kit, and I feel like that every other Warframe can go and get that. Even if it's diminishing returns, every other Warframe can get the best part of his kit. And I, I, I'm like, well, that's tough. I'm sure that's also the same for someone else in here, but that doesn't matter. Um, moving on, then we got his Stomp. And his Stomp, hey, anybody did Law of Retribution back in the day? Not bad, right? It can go through walls and whatnot, which is great. doesn't need line of sight. So it's good, but we outgrew the meta of like, hey, I need to go ahead and crowd control something like right here, right now. So basically, if you're running and gunning with him, I think you're in a good spot. Outside of that, Sorry, boys. I just can't really put him in great. I, I don't think he brings anything that's great. Raw, raw. That's mostly about it. Saren. Here's the thing. We, we did actually say this earlier. There were two other frames that I could debate for actually going into overpowered right now. Calervo, because Rika Pence is really goddamn strong, plus the Violet Shards with the uh, Raffle Advance. He's in a really gross spot right now. He could go into overpowered. Saren is the other one that could also follow it. Saren with the two Emerald Shards right now. Good gravy. Oh my. <laughs> Saren's so goddamn good. Saren will. Hold on. I was about to say, Saren will never not be meta. And then I realized what I said. No, because she's had... Actually, you know how strong Saren is with... Is she the most reworked Warframe? She is, right? She's gross. She's gross, is what she is. If you're looking for an ad clearer and you're looking for one of the best ad clearers in the game, Saren Jigawa. 
All right, Saren is your girl. Um, more so importantly, little tip, just try to work on keeping some enemy alive to go ahead and help you juggle the spores. That's basically about it. Besides from that, gross. Gross, gross, gross. What are the Emerald Shards for? The Emerald Shards will basically go and help you guarantee an armor strip. So she can armor strip with her first ability, which is insane. Corrosion stacks cap at 80%, something like that, uh, at 10 stacks. And with the new Emerald Shards, I can't remember how much they give you at the top of my head. I don't know. It's enough to go ahead and take it to 100%. So basically, she can go ahead and fully... I'm going to look into the build, and if you'd like the build, let me know, because I'll try and put it on YouTube, but I am going to look into it. Um, it was one of the very first builds that we thought of as soon as the Archon Shards dropped, but I've been so far behind because I've been working on other builds and other stuff, so I haven't really doing it. It's two for the normal ones. There you go. Right, up next, we've got Sephagoth. Wait, where did I put Sephagoth? Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is an interesting one. I don't know. Can I be honest? Sephagoth is like the Hildren for me. I, I, guys, I'm not fussed. He could even be B or C. I don't care. I don't care right now. I just don't care. Uh, we recently released a video, again, sorry for all the plugs, but we recently released a video with Sephagoth, and we had a little look. Uh, I'm disappointed that his shadow has a timer. Um, his reap augment has put him in a better position, so I do like it. Um his gloom is a good ability i just i don't care I, I just he's he's all right you know he's all right there's not much else going to say here he, he's a he's an he's an okay he's a good frame i don't think he's bad but i don't think he's great all right i, I don't think he's great so he, mm, he's got a good running gun build right now you know, he's also, somebody just said in chat, he's also a hungry Warframe, which is very true. He's got to be one of the most hungry Warframes. If you're looking for, um, if you're looking for formers or investments, he's going to eat up a lot. He's going to take like uh, way over 10 formers or even 10, I was going to say 10 Umbras. No, not really. But anyways, he's very, very investment heavy. Up next, we've got Styanax. Styanax won't ever go underneath A right now. Ever since, well, I say, yeah, what is it? Uh, Steel Path Nourish Plus Interpret Stands. Ever since the Overguard Augment came through, um, he's just been an absolute menace. So Nourish Plus Raddy Point with Overguards. In a Whispers in the War update, he is literally the... Is he the most seen Warframe right now? He might actually be. He's he's nuts in the current update. Um, he's just too good. He's too good. But go look into it. Nourish with Raddy Point and uh, Overguard Interpret Stands. He's too good. Uh, up next, we've got Titania. Titania's too good as well. Whether you go for a Dex Pixia build, which is a secondary, she's really, really meta. Um, or if you go for a really quick kind of speed run build with either Thermal Sunder or... Um, what's the other one? Uh, Nova's first ability. Uh, there's that as well, Null Star. Uh, or you can go for, and I saw this one recently, um, Animal, uh, Animal Conservation use her as your arc wing but subsume on rest and rage thought that was pretty cool um so instead of using your uh, arc wing you can just use her as your arc wing so you can go and do that um but yeah that was pretty cool so um she's a, she's just meta she's just too strong she's also just really good at melting bosses as well so who's this is this trinity this is trinity yeah this is so sad that i get to do this i hate that i have to do this i hate it so we spoke about this and we're going through all of the Warframes and, and just long story short, I feel so sorry for Trinity because Trinity is a Warframe that she held our hand in the past and she really helped us in so many matters, in so many different ways. Trinity was there for us, but we have outgrew Trinity. That's how you know Power Creep, Power Creep is real as well, by the way. That's how you know it because we've just outgrown her. She's like the proud parent that's finally like let go of our hands. That's basically it. She's good. She'll never be bad. She'll never be bad, but we're just too strong. She's grandma. She's grandma frame. All right. She's proud of us. We, we outgrew her. And uh, I'm thankful for all of the metas that she goddamn helped us in. Oh, my God. You, you knew when you had a Trinity in your team. I'll put it that way. So she's still good to use today. But nowadays, you know, there's so many different ways to get an energy. There's so many different ways of surviving that we just don't really need her, you know? That's why I'm saying, like, Harrow is probably a bit more of a modern day Trinity because, like, not only can he give you the energy and some of the survival and whatnot, but he can also go and give you, uh, you know, offensive buffs as well. So it's just, it feels a bit more of a modern day Trinity. But up next, we got Valkyrie. Uh, Valkyrie goes into the B for me. 
Um, Valkyrie is really strong offensively, and she's really strong defensively. That being said, I can't stand Hysteria, and I think it's very boring to play. Just my two cents. That whole spinning to winning kind of build is so goddamn tedious. Um, yeah, next. Like, I've got nothing else to say on that. She could go into A because, yes, she does a tremendous amount of damage. Um, sure, I don't. She, she's not my meta. <laughs> she might be your meta. You can put her in A. She's not my meta, boys. I'll be dead on this. She's boring as hell to play. I can't stand her. Deadly can't stand her. But Warcry Hysteria, gross combo. Gross combo. Uh, if anything, I prefer her Yeet line build. Just build as much range as you can on her and then stand on a cliff, look down, pick up an enemy, and you can throw them out of the map. They die. You one-shot any enemy. You can throw them out of the map. It's funny. Um, up next, we got Vorbin. Now, here's the thing. I, <laughs> just before this, I had a build for Vorbin, and someone reminded me that I could actually go ahead and get rid of that build for Octavia, which is actually very true. I only use Vorbin for, for um, Mirror Defense. Um, uh, here's the thing. Vorbin's a C, all right? I just... I can't be bothered to go ahead and explain any further than that. But basically, I used to go and use him for mirror defense and... Not mirror defense, sorry. Mobile defense. And uh, he's just there to go ahead and, and hold enemies back and just let me uh, do my thing. Oh, sorry. Let me move this tier list down so you can see all that. There you go. Uh, he was just basically there to go and let me go and do my thing without worrying about the enemies. That being said, you could literally do that with Octavius Mallet. So I went, oh, that's a good point. Either way, though, you can flesh share orb with him and you can go ahead and group with him. So there are some builds that you can go and do with him, but I don't think he's great because of that. And I don't think he's meta because of that. Well, he could fall into a meta, but I don't. you wouldn't see him like all of the time, if that makes sense. But yeah, no, his Bastille's very good and his flesh share orb's good. Outside of that, I think that's near enough where I draw the line. Tesla Nervous requires a bit more of a setup uh, with the Augment and it's like... You know, I'm next is Vol. It's surprise. Are you surprised? I'm not surprised. Can I just move off this and just go on to the next frame? But if you want a TLDR, his passive is good. Uh, his shock trooper for his first is good. Uh, his second is funny enough good. Uh, for speed and, and reload, and whatever his attack speed and whatnot. Uh, his, his third, who would have thought it? It's very good. Uh, critical damage and, and electric uh, stacked up to six shields. Uh, his fourth, it's. Guess what I'm about to say? It's good. Uh, capacitance build as well, if you really want to, with with Discharge and um, really good for Elite Sanctuary Onslaught as well. It's just, uh, and with the new shards coming through as well, he's, he's good. He's one of the best at uh, Eidlons. I say one of the best. Why did I say he's one of the best? He's the best at Eidlons, at least as of right now, from what I'm aware of. And I believe he also holds the current world record for speedrunning Profit Taker. I think he beat Saren. I could be wrong. But yeah, he's, he's gross. If you're a speedrunner, you like him. Verona. Verona goes into B. Um, she could also go into C. She could be argued between the two of them for what it's worth. Maybe I could go and put her in C as well. Um, although I've enjoyed playing her more recently than I enjoyed Sephagoth and Hildren with their builds. So All Friends Descent has received, she's received a lot more tweaks to make her a bit more balanced. So if you played her when she released, there was a lot of things that didn't synergize. As of right now though, with her new augment, she's in a much better spot. So, you know, without very, very little setup, you know, I was whacking out 16 million damage uh, on a hit. And I was like, that's pretty strong. So um, really fun to go and play, but still requires some setup not too much thankfully but mm, more investment than it is but yeah anyways i'll leave it there uh wisp comes as a surprise to no one guys she's a uh, she is either the best support or one of the best supports she might actually just be the she's she, would you say she's the best support i think she's the best support um not only that she might actually have the best passive in the game as well so yeah um her first ability reservoirs um give uh, survival movement speeds <sighs> everything under the sun and her passive whenever she jumps congratulations no one know where she is it's, she's crazy she's crazy she better than citrine i don't know i guess i guess there's a little bit of different things from what you're getting from both of them but she's up there she's up there i don't know that's up to you guys going to decide i'm not gonna have that conversation right now because i'm gonna carry on with the tier list but that is a good question um but she's up there her harrow citrine they're very very good very very good anyways um the only thing that lets her down is a. Uh, Soulgate, right? Her fourth. I think that's the only thing that lets her down. Which arguably, Soulgate could have been Crucible Blast from Corvex. And that would have been way better. You know? Yeah, she won't have tri Ring Capilla, but it would have been way better. Um, Wukong. Now, here's the thing. Based solely, based solely on spy missions, Wukong goes in A. 
Otherwise, kind of like what I did with Atlas. Otherwise, Wukong, 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 ah, Wukong goes into C based solely on spy missions. If you run Perspicacy, which is the helm inf infusion, and if you use this Cloud Walker and build for duration, you can go ahead and get through all of the tile set, get right up to the hack, hack and Perspicacy 100% guaranteed hacks for you. He is the most effortless build and effortless uh, spy rescue framed gun run, especially with the new Nama hacks. If you don't like the new Nama hacks, Perspicacy plus Wukong, you're sorted, all right? He's just too good at it. Outside of that though, I don't really like him. <laughs> don't like his iron staff. I think his first is okay, but it did get nerfed from where he's going to do the whole AOE thing with the ammo consumption and everything. And his third Defy, I just don't like the new Defy. I like the old Defy, but that's Revenant. Uh, Zaku goes into A, who would have thought it? Not much else for me to go and say here. Um, armor Strip, um, Zardas Whisper, very, very good. Uh, really good at looting as well. So if you're looking for like loot frames, go ahead and just run around and you know crack open stuff like loot Limbo, loot Zaku. Really good at that. Uh, and then his uh, second, uh, also very strong. It, it was a bit pants when it first came out, but right now it's actually in a really good spot. Uh, very hard to not put Zaku in A. Uh, arguably, he could have a bit better survivability. Um, I feel like if he did though, he could actually be argued for an S. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. Uh, Ureli, guess where I'm going to put Ureli? Mm, I wonder. I've got Ureli and Sephir next. These are the last two frames going to do you. Wow, this was over an hour right now. If you guys have been watching this this far, thank you guys so much. Um, but my goodness. Um, so we got Ureli and Sephir. Um, yeah, who goes where? I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. One of them's going to go in A. <laughs> One of them is going to go in D. <laughs> I wonder which one's going to go where. All right, you really is going in A. Yeah, you didn't see. No, of course she's not. She's going in D. Right, here's the thing about Ureli, and I said this earlier, and I'll, I'll double down with it, but I think I need to explain something because I was also called out on it, which actually makes sense. If the best part of your kit is your passive, you are not a good Warframe. With the exception of Hydroids. <laughs> Because Hy Hydra's passive is very, very good. So what I mean by this, though, is more in the sense of I don't quite understand Yoreli's kit, and I don't quite know what they were trying to do with her. Here's the thing. Her first is actually pretty decent. Her second, Merilina, has an issue. Tile sets are not catered, especially not all tile sets, are catered for K-Drive in mind, right? Which means Merilina automatically is at fault. And it's not Merilina's fault, it's K-Drive fault. Like... We're not ready for a Warframe that has a built-in K-Drive, right? We're just not ready for it. Yes, we have a Warframe that has a built-in Arcwing, which is Titania, but notice how she shrinks down in size. So I don't know whether or not we go and shrink down Yureli in size to try and help us get around a little bit better. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> bit of a weird one, but either way, it's too clunky, it's too janky, it doesn't work, unfortunately. So therefore, Merilina's at fault, and Merilina is her survival. So you take Merilina out, her third ability, Aqua's Blades, doesn't scale off range and wants you to get next to the enemy. Okay, but if I have to take Merilina out because I have no reason for it, then Aqua Blades also doesn't have really that much of a reason because I'm not going to suicide up next to enemies. It's still path. You'll get blown up if you try and walk up to them without any kind of damage reduction, shield, like shield returns, anything else. Like she has this really weird trifecta. I'm not going to do it right now, but because but you'll be able to paint it. You'll have Merilina here. You'll have problem with Merilina, K drive and whatnot, tile set, so forth, all of that. You'll have survival issue kind of being a problem here. You don't then going to have Aqua Blades being a bit of a problem here that then requires all of that. And then it kind of like loop, you'll see like this really weird loop where there's one problem that meets another problem and it just goes round and round and round where it just meets all of these problems and it can't stop meeting problems. That's basically Ureli in that shower. And then there's her Riptides, which is okay. Um, her passive was out of doubt the best part about her. I don't quite know what theme they were going for. Yes, it's a water theme, but I don't quite understand what they were trying to do with her um, outside of, yes, she's a water theme. Um, her kit doesn't really seem to make sense. If she was going for like a support kit, then why she got this K-Drive and Surgeon Blades? It doesn't make sense. Like, you're going to go for a support kit, Citrine. 
yeah, Gara, if you really wanted to, you know, it's even with Spectre Rage, Spectre Siphon Augment, like, there's, there's much better, like, she was advertised as that, and she's not that, so I don't know what's going on with her, but either way, I think she lacks identity right now, besides from being a water frame, she needs a rework, and then finally the Sephir, and Sephir goes into A, Sephir might be one of the perfect warframes that almost doesn't require mods, it, it's gen it's it's actually crazy to say that out loud, but when you really think about it, really think about it, she doesn't actually need mods. Yes, they can help. Mostly, more importantly, range can help. But for the most part, it's nuts how good every ability on itself is. Her first, her second, her third, and her fourth. Like kind of crazy it's gen it's kind of disgusting she's in a very good spot more more i guess more so her third and a fourth but and her passive whilst being aerial again for her first just really really good duration and range in her and she just completes everything you know so anyways anyways i think that is as much of a rundown as i could do it's been over an hour i'm sorry that this video took so long but hopefully i'm never i'm probably not going to do a tier list ever again so i hope you guys enjoyed something like this um and if you did a friendly reminder to go ahead and hit the, the like button come subscribe if you guys are new uh, i've been reminded by my chat as well that if you guys do ever want to go ahead and hear my thoughts or breakdowns or builds or anything else like that i am usually live on twitch twitch.tv forward slash no sympathy as well you can catch me over here and i do some like highlight stuff and reactions over at tiktok as well but uh there is the discord if you want to go check that out but anyways i'm rambling uh much love to you guys i hope you enjoyed today's tier list I think it looks all right. It's logical. I think it's logical. But anyways, I'd love to go and hear your opinions. And it's all right. Don't worry. If you disagree with what I've got, let me know. It's fine to disagree. I'm not going to go and take it hardly. But if you do think that you're really zest here, uh, I will disagree with you. All right. Yeah, well. Anyways, thank you guys for watching today's video. I'll see you guys again in the next video. <laughs>